um, thank you, Hala, for the introduction and uh, IDRC for giving me this opportunity to, to present our work uh, in this uh, uh, project. Uh, so my talk today is going to be about the drivers of uh, food choice uh, in school children using a gamified choice experiment in Lebanon and Tunisia, uh, mentioning uh, in brief that we, I'm going to focus on the Tunisian results because of because we just finished um, we finished recently finished data collection in Lebanon because of the difficulties associated with the crisis and uh, uh, and the Corona, the twin uh, financial crisis and Corona crisis. So uh, we are still we are yet to analyze the data and and, and make sense of them. Um, so um, by way of background, um, uh, this this uh, assessing food choices and the factors that influence them in children and adolescents is, is very challenging. I mean many. Uh, many biases uh, and uh, sources of error, um, uh, data collection error might uh, interfere uh, with the whole process. Uh, things like recall bias, social de desirability bias, which are particularly acute among uh, children, uh, if we are to rely on 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 on, on collecting real uh, real data. Um, discrete choice experiments have therefore been viewed and used extensively as a convenient way of implicitly assessing the importance of, of drivers motivating behavioral choices by looking by, and, and discrete choice experiments are, as we're going to see later are basically uh, uh, survey-based techniques that use hypothetical uh, purchasing scenarios and through which um, uh, preferences uh, for a variety of characteristics that uh, that determine uh, various food products or other types of products uh, can be gauged using econometric analyses. Um, these set of techniques, uh, discrete choice experiments, have been first applied in the fields of marketing and transportation, I have to add, uh, where the first um, developments have been made and keep being made. Uh, but they have become increasingly used in a variety of fields, from environmental economics to health, uh, economics and policy, and also uh, in um, in the realm of food choice, uh, not least in, in in trying to look at how, for example, things like food labels and, and nutrition information influence uh, choices of foods, and, and of course prices and other contextual uh, other contextual uh, factors, and of course technology based uh, applications that would make these. Uh, these methods more appealing and more engaging have have shown promise. Uh, and engaging all types of respondents, and of course, uh, chief among them, school children, who, who uh, you know, where the challenge is really in engaging them and 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 making these um, uh, exercises more approachable and understandable. Uh, so the objectives of this uh, this piece of work in which which I led uh, within this project was uh, to develop an innovative, contextually adapted BCE discrete choice experiment that accounts for the complex set of factors that can influence school children's uh, food choices. And, and by the complex set of factors, we, we really try to, as much as possible, account for, um, you know, holistically for the, um, uh, the determinants of food choice, uh, as we're going to see later, of, of these school children's across their school day. And of course, to implement uh, this DCE to identify children's preferences uh, for a variety of food items, uh, but also the attributes uh, of food, uh, be that preparation or difficulty of access or uh, other social contexts like the um, uh, what we call modeling, uh, the availability of, of friends or other types of peer pressure or, or parents, what have you, and the way they affect children's uh, food choices. Uh, so in terms of methodology, um, a lot of qualitative research has been um, uh, involved in trying to define the context within which school children make their food choices. And this was by no way, by, by, by no means an easy task. We used the user-centered design, uh, set of, a series of uh, user-centered design workshops that were conducted in both Lebanon and Tunisia with children. Uh, and that focused on letting them tell the stories of their typical day. Uh, now, of course, I have to, um, you know, as, as already mentioned uh, uh, by Hala and also by Jad, these 
th this work involved conducting two large scale uh, surveys with school children in both Greater Tunis and Greater Beirut. Uh, so, going back to this uh, qualitative research, we focused on letting them uh, tell the stories of a typical day. You can see the drawings here where students, where these school children were actually. Uh, you know, uh, uh, left to highlight where they encountered food in their typical day. And this informed um, the choice of nodes, um, which were identified as six main nodes, um, uh, which, you know, which are a combination of time and, the, you know, time of the day and the location in which school children typically had their meals. Um, six nodes were identified. Um, so in terms of survey design, uh, six nodes were, were identified uh, and represented the opportunities for food choice in uh, a school child's uh, daily trajectory. And this starts with breakfast um, at home and then um, any opportunities to eat food on the, road, uh, on the road to school by stopping at shops there. And then uh, um, have a, a meal at recess, whether, you know, uh, and, and well, whether through a lunchbox prepared at home or by buying, uh, again, uh, meals or uh, other food items uh, from a cafeteria. Then the lunch at school, either at cafeteria or going back and, and eating food at home and going back to school. Then uh, a snack at home and then uh, a dinner at home. And, and these were the nodes identified in the uh, Tunisian example, uh, I believe. And uh, Lebanon's uh, nodes were slightly different, but uh, again, we identified six nodes uh, Grosso modo, they are very similar in, in, in structure and, and definition. Of course, um, the um, uh, the choice uh, occasions that we got, that, that we identified later is consistent of um, a series of drinks, meals, and side meals. So three drinks, three meals, and three side meals. Which the uh, you know in each choice situation, the um, uh, the uh, school ch school children have had to choose from. Whether it's drinks or meals or side meals, the children were presented with a healthy or a moderately healthy, and I, I guess we um, we decided to call it uh, somehow healthy and unhealthy uh, options. So they had um, uh, three um, choices of drinks, one healthy, one a moderately healthy, and one unhealthy, and, this, and likewise for a meal and likewise for a side meal. Um, and of course, other, um, uh, other attributes were accounted for uh, one of which is the items placement, um, um, not in all nodes, in certain nodes, uh, where the attribute levels vary between one where uh, the, the food item is, is easy to reach on a table, for example, or difficult to reach, uh, for example, in a closet or cupboard or what have you. And prepara preparation, of course, uh, one level being the convenience and easiness to consume, and the other where the uh, school child had to uh, actually uh prepare the item uh whether it's cutting an apple or making a sandwich or what have you before eating it and of course prices uh, a price in in certain nodes where uh, the the situation involves buying uh, an item and the prices varied from cheap to typical to expensive we had to make it as as comprehensible as possible for school children and we also uh, included what we call a shifter, uh, which is uh, similar to an attribute, but applying to all nine uh, choice situations similarly. Uh, that involved uh, the availability of either a parent or a peer uh, not being present. That would be the first level, or the parent and the peer uh, would be present, but not eating. Uh, peer or, uh, or parent present and eating healthy. And the fourth level it would be the parent or peer. Uh, pres being present and eating unhealthy. And this represents various levels of peer pressure or influence um, in the setup within which the school children are making their choices in order to try and gauge how these would uh, impact uh, choices in the, direction, in the direction of either healthy or unhealthy choices. Um, so um, then, you know, of course, the three types of beverages uh, or meals or side meals, you could see, um, uh, you know, had, uh, were chosen uh, as concrete uh, examples from a list of 50 in Tunisia and 100 food items in Lebanon that are most commonly uh, consumed foods from uh, dietary recall uh, data and from previous studies. 
so this involved a lot of uh, research in order to identify these typical food sites and beverages that uh, Tunisian and Lebanese school children uh, would eat. And of course, they were assigned to uh, a lot of nutrition research uh, went into assigning these um, uh, types of foods into uh, healthy, that would be, for example, uh, you know, for a side that would be a banana uh, or uh, or a medium healthy or unhealthy item. So an unhealthy item would be for a juice, for example, a, a soft drink. Um, so we did, you know, we assigned these food items uh, to this variety of uh, of health levels, um, and of course to the different nodes. Different nodes entailed uh, different types of. Uh, uh, food items, whether it's a breakfast or a lunch or a, what have you. Um, and again, assigned to different health levels. Uh, using um, uh, complex experimental design techniques, uh, we use, you know, we use these, you know, complex experimental design techniques to try and combine these item types within, uh, along with attributes uh, and shifters to generate 60 choice cards, which, which of course cannot be uh, administered uh, at once uh, to each respondent. So we had to block them into um, uh, into 20 blocks of three cards each, which meant that uh, the respondent would get, uh, f within each node would get three cards only from one of 20 blocks. There's a mistake here in, 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 in writing these bullets. Um, and, um, um, and of course, uh, going through the workday, uh, that would mean three uh, choice sets from each of the nodes, and uh, meaning uh, three multiplied by six, that means 18 uh, choice sets in total. Here is an example. The table to the right is an example of, of such a choice set, which involves three beverages. So from left to right, these would be um, healthy, medium healthy, beverage two would be medium healthy, and beverage three would be unhealthy. So you could see the healthy beverage is a fresh orange juice, uh, but um, somehow uh, healthy would be a pineapple juice, tetra pack, and the unhealthy option, uh, beverage op option, would be a chocolate milkshake. And likewise uh, for meals, and likewise for uh, side meals. And you know, repeatedly in the you know in the second uh, choice set and the third choice set, you'd see these uh, uh, types of meals uh, varying. Uh, you know, uh, varying and, and being selecting from any of these 50 uh, items in Tunisia or uh, 100 items in the example of Lebanon. And uh, of course, placement levels also differed, uh, preparation levels also differed. And you could see last in the last row, uh, the modeling or peer effect here in that case, it's, it's the presence of a, uh, that's the breakfast at home, of course, that would be the presence of a parent eating a healthy food. Uh, in order to, uh, and applying, uh, uh, you know, um, homogeneity to all nine options. Uh, each respondent, uh, the school child could choose none of these options, could choose one of them, or could choose nine of them. So any combination could be chosen by uh, uh, the, uh, the the school child. Um, of course, this. Typically, choice experiments encountered in the field can be, you know, can very often assume this tabular form. With school children, we, we, we gamified this uh, application uh, using uh, uh, a computer game that would make it more appealing. So this would translate, for, so a choice set like this would translate into one of these choice scenarios that would be presented repeatedly. Um, so 18 of those in total uh, would be presented to each uh, respondent uh, and uh, to gauge their choices. So you could see here the Tetra Pak juice uh, on the side table, uh, a labne, which is uh, a typical uh, uh, type of breakfast um, in Lebanon, alongside a muffin and a cup of tea, uh, a sliced apple here, the fridge, which has to be opened by the school child to discover what's inside, and then some cupboards here can, you know, weigh with, which might uh, include some items and a croissant and, uh, uh, and pancakes, I believe, which are placed, uh, you know, which are being made artificially hard to reach within this example. And likewise in the store, you can see a similar example here. Um, so you can see different levels of preparation, different levels of placement, uh, and of course, uh, the mother here eating uh, an unhealthy uh, food option. So this is, a, you know, this is how we try to translate and, and uh, these uh, 
you know bland table if, uh, tables if i might say into something more engaging to the to the kids and more realistic uh, in which the choices as much as possible would approach a real life situation um in terms of empirical analysis so of course going back to this example here we had nine items from which which involved nine choices so if you keep this in mind the model involved actually uh we, we estimated nine different choice models for each of the uh nine options within this choice situation uh of course we had to model them as as random effect models to account for the fact that different uh, school children made multiple choices for to account for the panel data effect um and um uh, so, so, uh, so, so, basically, what this uh, logit model did is to estimate the probability of choosing uh, one option, so say a healthy uh, beverage, as a function of its own type. Uh, healthy. So, is it a fresh orange juice, or is it a fresh, uh, uh, or is it uh, mineral water, or what have you? Uh, and also as a function of the day of the week, uh, and also uh, placement, uh, price. Uh, if applicable, uh, and also as a function of the um, peer pressure or the uh, uh, the presence of a mother or friend eating healthy or unhealthy. Um, going back to this choice set, you really one would immediately immediately realize here that the, the 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 probability of choosing beverage one, for example, is not simply a function of its own attributes. Okay, so going down the column, but also is a function of the uh, eight other uh, options. So in order to account for this, um, within each of the nine uh, logic models, we also um, endu we also accounted for the dependencies. So therefore, we included the choices of the uh, eight other options. And this way, we had a um, nine by nine matrix of uh, choice dependencies, as we're going to see later in the model outputs. And now the nodes uh, were too many, uh, and of course we had nodes and uh, sub nodes. So, so we lumped together nodes of a similar character into four uh, super nodes, if we may call them: um, a home, a school, a lunchbox, and 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 road super home. Now, in terms of results, we uh, so basically what we estimated is four sets of nine models, uh, one for each of these super nodes. Uh, and what we ended up with is uh, something, a table uh, which might look monstrous, uh, I'm sure, to many of you, uh, which actually uh, presented the, um, if I may use, um, so, uh, so going down, uh, right. let me share again. Can you see my slides or? Your slides have disappeared now. We can see your screen. Your they? Okay, yeah. let me just share them again. I need to go to slide one. Yeah. So basically, these are uh, at the top uh, the head where the heading says item selections. This is where we model uh, dependencies between uh, different. Uh, the choice of each item and the choices of um, uh, other items, whether they are related, uh, the same nature or others. And also we have um, uh, estimates for uh, preference for a day or control for a day of the week, uh, also preferences in terms of play, placement, preparation, modeling, and of course for the random effect. And also we've, um, we've esti I've estimated the choice probability uh, of choosing any type of uh, um, uh, item. Now, without going into the details, I'm going to highlight the key findings uh, from this analysis. Um, so the first uh, interesting item here, the, 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 um, uh, what is highlighted here is the average probability of choosing from left to right uh, a healthy beverage, a somehow a healthy beverage, and an unhealthy beverage. And uh, invariably, I mean, here the results are for the home. Uh, but, you know, for, for uh, most nodes, um, you know, for virtually all nodes, uh, we see that the most likely item to be chosen is actually a healthy beverage. And this actually, uh, and, and this is, uh, you know, the, the, the probability here, which is highlighted. So you could see that a healthy beverage is more likely to be chosen 
uh, on average than a somehow healthy and the non-healthy, which is an unhealthy beverage, which is encouraging in terms of uh, school children's choices uh, uh, of beverages. And a similar finding could be found uh, for sides, um, where children um, actually virtually always chose a healthy side. Uh, more often than a medium or unhealthy side. So with respect to beverages and side, usually the tendency has transpired more so for beverages is to choose one beverage rather than two. And this usually would be more often than not a healthy beverage and likewise for sides. Now, when it comes for two meals, this is where the results are interesting because you could see, I mean, the numbers I've highlighted here show actually uh, a massive increase in the likelihood of choosing um, uh, an unhealthy meal alongside a healthy meal or the other way around. These numbers, by the way, are odds ratios. So what the number at, um, uh, what the two numbers uh, tell us is um, uh, the odds, uh, by how much the odds uh, of choosing an unhealthy meal uh, would increase if a healthy meal is chosen and, and vice versa. And what what this tells us is that if, if a school child chooses a healthy meal, he, uh, suddenly the odds of choosing an unhealthy meal um, uh, is multiplied by 38, which is a massive increase, and vice versa. Now, what this tells us is that some sort of compensatory choice, uh, when it comes to meals, some sort of compensatory choices of healthy and unhealthy, uh, unhealthy meals are being made, meaning that um, um, uh, uh, children are tempted uh, to choose unhealthy meals um, because probably they, they, they might taste better, what have you, but then uh, they are also likely to choose a healthy meal alongside, uh, alongside it, probably, if I may put it this way, because of, uh, you know, so, so, you know to, to, to sort of address some guilt feeling or what have you of eating an unhealthy meal, and sort of, um, you know, compensating for this unhealthy behavior by uh, eating a healthy meal, which is, um, uh, and, and this seems to apply only to meals uh, rather than uh, sides and beverages, which I repeat, uh, only one item uh, tends to be chosen of each rather than two, like, in, in, like what could happen with meals. These are the main key findings. And I have to say that, um, uh, you know, with this experiment, it's really the results of it's really these dependencies that tend to be the most interesting at the expense of the attributes, which um, in, in, in hindsight tended to be um, uh, uh, basically trumped, if you may, by the by by by, by this focus on the types of uh, items to be chosen. Um, and I'm going to speak about this a bit more later. So. Uh, to wrap up, what are the strengths of our uh, study? Um, one strength is that it has uh, it was adapted to children through a very extensive user-centered uh, design, um, uh, which uh, aimed to be as concrete as possible and uh, um, and to avoid abstract and uh, you know abstract designs, which is very uh, common in, in, in discrete choice experiments. And related to this, we tried as much as possible to mimic real life uh, situations by avoiding direct references to the unhealthiness uh, of the food item. For example, by, uh, um, by, by, uh, by explicitly referring to one food item as unhealthy, by writing it literally uh, on the food item or as an attribute and others uh, as unhealthy. We left it to the uh, school children to actually make their assessments and some interesting results emerged, especially for uh, beverages and cider. We saw that even though the, um, uh, the, the, the um, healthy options were not labeled as, as such, but they remained uh, the likelier to be chosen. And of course, some uh, healthy, some, some very interesting results as, put, as far as uh, um, uh, meals are concerned uh, in this uh, compensatory behavior. Um, again, uh, referring explicitly to the you know, to, to certain nutrient and uh, uh, nutritional aspects in food is very common in, in discrete choice experiments and tends to lead uh, to lead respondents to, to choose certain items uh, at the expense of others uh, because of social desirability act, uh, aspect or uh, social desirability bias or other similar biases. Uh, we use contextual food. Again, uh, a large amount of uh, typically consumed foods among school children were identified uh, in both Tunisia and 
Lebanon to make this um, uh, this this experiment as relevant as possible and as contextually relevant as possible. And, and lots of uh, nutrition uh, nutritionist research went into trying and allocate these foods to, to different healthiness uh, health levels. And of course, the large sample size uh, that was used, 2,500 in the example of Tun uh, Tunisia, slightly smaller, somehow smaller sample, but still uh, quite big in the example of Lebanon. Um, now, in terms of limitations uh, that uh, that we encountered and that we, you know, we'd like to address in, in future research, we noticed that the lived experience made the analysis quite complex, uh, and so we ended up having to simplify in lump nodes. And with the simplification came lots of, uh, I, I don't want to say unfortunate, but the fact that certain aspects overshadowed others. And uh, for example, the types of um, uh, item selections and the dependencies at the expense of um, attributes or uh, or peer pressure, what have you, which we couldn't recover very strong effect for them. And uh, whether within this data set um, or in future research, we can recover, we can, uh, you know, come up with, uh, you know, uh, can manage to, to, to identify stronger results. Uh, this is still to be seen. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as I said, because of the uh, heavy focus on, 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 on contextualizing and making this uh, experiment context specific, the effects of attributes and shifters were sort of trumped by uh, the types of food items, which in itself is, uh, is interesting in that, you know, the school children were actually focusing mostly on, on the food items per se. Um, that's probably part of the realism of the experiment, but, uh, you know, uh, if, if, you know, the uh, to the extent that the aim was to try and find the effect of placement or price or whatever, we didn't get uh, extremely compelling results on this front. Um, again, uh, parents and peer effects that were not strong, as I said, and sometimes uh, ran against uh, what we predicted. And in high hindsight, uh, we think that to gauge the effects of attributes more accurately, it would be uh, better to anchor the DCE in one product, probably, rather than uh, this multitude of, of products that we looked at, uh, and focus on uh, on the attribute and, and variations themselves, rather than to try and account for both attributes and uh, products variability at the same time. Um, and of course, um, for example, in the you know when it came to preparation, uh, we found that in this game, probably unlike real life. Um, uh, meals that needed more preparation were actually more likely to be chosen. And this probably reflected the fun aspect of the game rather than, uh, you know, students actually trying to reenact uh, their experience of preparing food items in real life. Um, and, you know, which, which, uh, which actually is a sort of limitation when it comes to these games of accounting for attributes of this nature uh, that, that involve uh, real life experience. Uh, no significant results when it came to price. Uh, and that's, uh, again, to remind you, this is the case of Tunisia. Uh, in Lebanon, probably, um, uh, you know, price would be a more pressing item. There's still to be seen. We were still to analyze. Well, we have yet to analyze the Lebanese data. Uh, and of course, it is not uncommon in the literature to find that uh, prices might be seen in certain uh, cases as indicators of quality, which means that under certain circumstances, more expensive foods might be more likely to be chosen. Um, now, of course, um, um, I've already covered the third point. So again, we haven't seen a significant effect in the case of Tunisia, but probably the effects would be much more prominent uh, in the expected uh, direction uh, in Lebanon because of the weight of the uh, stronger economic crisis here. And finally, um, a few um, ideas for future research. Now that we're moving to the analysis of the Lebanese case study, um, it is worth highlighting that uh, our quantitative research has been also accompanied by qualitative research that, uh, that tried to probe, probe uh, further uh, into the choices of some of the uh, survey respondents by using qualitative research methods. So um, through some sort of mixed, uh, uh, mixed methods techniques, we can uh, use, we can hopefully use this qualitative uh, research techniques to augment the insights from the DCEs in ways that uh, possibly 
uh, were not uh, that were not possible for uh, Tunisia for the Tunisian case. Um, we hope that in the future we will be able to zoom in on in, in more depth on specific context of, of relevance to policy. For example, uh, rather than lump notes together, uh, take the uh, example of cafeterias in isolation and focusing upon them as a case, uh, as a node where, uh, which is relevant to, to, to policy in terms of interventions. But of course, there's many uh, such nodes and, and uh, the only limiting factor, I guess, is time, extremely limiting factor is, is time, but we hope we can, we can probe further into uh, you know these uh, and, and more you know have focused more on these uh, nodes and finally um, of course we have one of the appeal of our experiment is to leave school ch school children survey respondents to assess the healthiness of the food items themselves but this of course is, can be fraught with difficulty and this is part of the realism of the uh, the experiment uh, I mean in real life it's probably going to look like this. But uh, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, whilst we would, we would still like to avoid labeling food items in, in future applications, DCA applications as healthy or unhealthy, perhaps a, 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 it would be interesting to try and anchor uh, further uh, future research and more concrete markers of healthiness like salt content or fat or sugar uh, content, which occur in real life and labels uh and and see what uh how how cho how how food choices can be shaped there and on this note i'm gonna um uh stop and thank again the uh, scale team which which uh which did uh, magnificent uh, work in, in, in supporting this uh, this research uh and uh thank you all for listening thank you thank you so